What's up, everybody? Today, I wanna to be talking about one of my most frequently asked questions, which is how to keep subjects in focus while moving. So we're gonna be going over my top four ways to keep a subject in focus. Some will be using manual focus, others using autofocus, and we'll be using different types of gear. Today we have our red weapon, which does not have autofocus, it's completely manual. And then here we have our 1DX Mark II, which does have the dual pixel autofocus system. We're also gonna be using the glide cam. We'll be using a three axis gimbal. Here I have the Movi M5. We'll be doing some on a tripod, some handheld. So we'll give you a good variety of different situations and scenarios in which you would have a hard time grabbing focus. One of the most obvious ways to have continuous focus while you're shooting is to buy an expensive follow focus system and or have a second operator whose job it is to pull focus. Now, because a lot of us can't afford to buy a focus system like that and or to hire on people on all of our shoots to separately pull our focus, I'm gonna be just covering how to do it. One man crew all by yourself. So without further ado, I will give you my four ways to keep focus and then we're gonna go through several different scenarios and show you how I apply those four ways in different settings. Option number one is set your focus and then maintain that same distance from your subject throughout the shot. For more of a handheld look, I'll put my off hand on the glide cam shaft, bring my other hand up here, and I will manually focus as I go. So I can get closer, keep him focused, come farther away, change my focus. So that's the second way. Number three is to use a higher aperture. In this case, I'm now shooting at a 22 aperture. And that way you lose your shallow depth of field, but it does keep a lot more in focus. And so I can go farther away and closer, and you'll see that my subject will stay in focus. Option number four is to buy a camera that has a good autofocus system like Canon's dual pixel. Most of Canon's DSLRs are now coming with this dual pixel and they are found in other manufacturers as well. Although, like I said, I think Canon has the best autofocus system. So those are my four main ways of keeping a subject in focus. Now we're gonna go through a few different scenarios and apply those four ways using both the manual and the autofocus options. So scenario number one is probably the most common scenario and that is somebody moving towards you or away from you and trying to keep them in focus that whole time. First option is set focus and then maintain that distance. Now a quick cheat to grabbing focus real quick and real precise is especially when you have the sun beating down on you, you can't see your LCD screen because you got the sun reflecting off of it so it's hard to tell what's in focus and what's not, is what I'll do is I'll switch from video mode to photo mode right there and then I'll come in here and use the autofocus system within my photo mode because most DSLR cameras will have at least a good autofocus system with the photo mode if they don't have in video uh, autofocusing system. So I use that photo mode, grab the focus, you can even take a picture if you want, and then right after I grab that focus, switch back to video mode and maintain that distance. And I know I'm in focus. And then if I wanna switch to a new distance, Come in here to photo mode, take a picture if you want, got that focus down, and then maintain that distance. And then back up, grab focus, video mode, and perfect focus again, and then maintain that distance. So that's just a quick cheat to be able to grab perfect focus every time and then maintain that distance is by using the autofocus within your photo mode. So we're gonna use option one now. Nate, you're gonna be walking towards us. Got my focus, maintain distance, now walk towards me. And now I just maintain that same distance. Very good. Now let's say we're still walking, but I wanna get a farther away shot. So I'll just back up a little, grab new focus here, and go ahead, and then maintain that distance. Very good. So that's option one. Um, you can, if you don't want to rely on or don't have a good photo autofocus mode in your camera, you can do it manually. But like I said, it's just harder, especially when it's outdoors and you can't see your screen very well. Option number two in this situation as he's moving towards me is another manual option. Instead of more of a smooth shot, this is gonna be more of a handheld look. So I put my right hand on the gimbal like that, and then I bring my left hand up here to continually rack focus. So go ahead and start walking towards me. 
and I can get farther away, change focus, get closer, readjust the focus. So this is just me continually changing focus as I go. You can do it on a glide cam, you can do it just actually handheld. There have been scenarios in the past, like I shot a commercial, a girl walking towards me. At the time I didn't have autofocus, and so I was on a long lens as she walked towards me. I just gradually racked the focus and tried to match her movement. And it took probably seven or eight takes for me to get that exact rack focus down to follow exactly. But I wanted the shallow depth of field because I was shooting at 2.8. And so I had to get that focus perfect as she walked towards me. So that is an option to manually rack focus, but it is more difficult and it's probably gonna take more takes. Option number three is to raise the aperture. So now, same thing, got our subject walking towards us. Now I'm gonna go from 2.8 up to a 22 aperture. Again, we can use our photo auto-focusing system to grab our focus, go back to video mode, and go ahead and start walking. And now you see everything's in focus with that higher aperture. So I can move back here, I can come closer, and even the background's in focus. Everything's gonna be focused, so that's one option. I don't love this option just because, for me, it's not quite as cinematic. So for wider shots, I think that's fine, especially when you want all the beautiful background and focus, that's a great time to bump that aperture up. So when I'm doing landscapes or, you know, I have someone walking in frame, but I also want the background and focus, those are the times that I raise the aperture and I'm okay losing that shallow depth of field. Now, moving on to what is now becoming my favorite option is option number four, which is using my autofocus. Now we're gonna try it out and show you how I'd use it in this scenario. So we're gonna go back down to a 2.8, gonna flip on our autofocus system. Now there's two modes within this autofocusing system. One is called flexi zone, the other is called tracking. Now flexi zone is the one I use more often than not. So on flexi zone, basically what you do here is you have a white box and wherever you place that white box, whatever's in the very center of it will stay in focus. So, so this is now flexi zone, go ahead and walk. So I can come closer, farther away. And as long as I keep them in that box, he will stay in focus. If I accidentally move that box, he goes out of focus. So whatever is in that box will stay in focus. So that's, like I said, the, the uh, autofocus option that I use most often. Now we're gonna try the tracking mode. This one I only use when I only have one person on camera and only one face because what this option does when you use tracking mode, basically it's gonna track the face or whatever you tell it to track. So I'm gonna select his face, tell it to track him. And as long as you only have one face in there, go ahead and come, moving towards me, away. It'll do a good job of keeping him in focus the whole time. But if you have multiple subjects in there, that tracking option doesn't work as well. So usually use flexi zone, but if I only have one subject, one face, the tracking mode works pretty well. Now, one thing to point out uh, when you're using manual focus, it's okay to have your subject go in and out of focus. They don't have to be perfectly in focus the entire time. In fact, sometimes I purposely do that where I'm using manual focus and I'll purposefully start the clip out of focus and then come into focus. So it's okay to have things out of focus sometimes. It can often be actually a preferred look. So don't feel like you have to have everything in focus all the time. So that's the basics of how I would approach a subject moving back and forth like that. You can use any of those four options. It really just kind of depends on the situation exactly. I've used all of them. You know, I've only been using, only had the luxury of using an autofocus camera for the past year. Before that, I made hundreds of videos only in manual mode, and so it can be done. Don't feel like just because you don't have the option to autofocus that you can't still get great focus. It can still be done, you just have to master those first three ways of grabbing focus. Our next scenario is using a three-axis gimbal from the back of a moving vehicle. And we're also using the red, which has manual focus only. So auto focusing isn't going to be an option in this scenario. Also, because we're on a Movi, option two doesn't work because you can't really change the focus while you're using the Movi because it'll kind of mess with the motors here. So we're gonna rule out those two options. So my two options I'd go with in this kind of scenario would be option one which is maintaining the same distance, and option two, which is raising the aperture. So we'll do both right now so you can see those in play. All right, so first we're gonna do option one. First I'm gonna set my focus from that distance right there, and now I'm gonna make sure to tell my subject to stay that same distance, and I'm gonna tell my driver 
to try and drive the same speed so that we can maintain this distance throughout the shot. And we're shooting at a 2.8, so we don't have a lot of room to uh, work with that focus here. Now we're gonna go from 2.8 aperture up to a 22 aperture, and that way we're gonna have more leeway with focus. And this is probably the option I would most likely choose in this scenario because that way my subject can fall farther behind and get closer and everything's gonna be in focus. So this would be my go-to option is using a higher aperture in this situation. So this is how I filmed the smoke grenade freeboarding in San Francisco was me hanging out the back of a car just like this. So that would be my go-to choice, shooting at a high aperture for this situation. Okay, now we got our three axis gimbal on the ground and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but now he's gonna be jogging. And we're back to option one where I maintain the same distance. So first I'll set my focus and then I'm gonna try and maintain this distance throughout the shot. Action. Okay, good. Now we're doing the face. This is so I can piece all this together in a sequence. And action. Good. <laughs> and last but not least, we're gonna get a wide shot. Grabbing focus, action. Okay, good. So they're using option one. I've set different focuses at different distances and then I cut in between all of those different shots. So that's how I do a lot of my videos is just getting a lot of different takes, different focal lengths, different distances, and just resetting my focus for every distance and then maintaining that distance. All right, next scenario is filming fast moving subjects like action sports, like motocross, or any type of you know thing that's going super fast by you and you can't physically keep up with them. So we have Nate at the end of the road here. He's gonna be zooming past on his uh, longboard. And so in a scenario like this, I would either just raise my aperture all the way up to 22 so everything's in focus, or I'll pick a spot where the pinnacle or climax of the action is gonna be happening, set your focus for that point, and then allow them to be out of focus, come into focus, and then go back out of focus. So I've got my focus set here. Very nice. So as you can see in that one, we kind of set one point where He'd give kind of a little wave to the camera and that was where we had our focus set and everything before that and after that was out of focus. Now, I'm gonna switch up to 22 aperture and this is honestly most likely, especially if I don't have control over the situation, what I would choose in this scenario is just to have that aperture all the way up. And I still have my focus set for that same point, but now that my aperture's higher, more is gonna be in focus. Okay, go ahead. Very nice. All right, our next scenario is filming an interview of somebody who is moving back and forth and all over the place, and so it's hard to keep focus, especially if you want to have a shallow depth of field. I love shooting interviews at a 1.4 aperture, but that means you have hardly any room to work with to keep your subject in focus. So we're filming Nate here. We got him in focus, perfect. And then we start filming him, and he starts bouncing back and forth. Pretty normal when you're shooting interviews, but they they bounce around and, and get really into their interview and they're going back and forth and in and out of focus. So that's a common problem. And so manual focus is tough to use on this just because you can't really predict where they're going to go, especially when you're that shallow of a depth of field. Now, if I was doing manual, go ahead and do it again. I would have to sit here and try and track his movements, which is doable, but I can kind of manually anticipate where he's going. And sometimes if they're not moving too bad, I'll just keep the focus set and allow them to come a little bit in and out of focus. As long as they reset back to their original spot, I'm okay with them going in and out a little bit. But if they are in focus here to start and then they readjust their position, then I have to permanently change that focus. So if I'm not using autofocus, I do have to sit back here and manually pay attention and make sure that focus doesn't ever permanently shift too much. Now, ideally I would use my autofocus setting 
Now, when I'm doing the flexi zone, go ahead and start doing your back and forth. This one can work, but if he starts going left to right, then it starts getting the background in focus. So flexi zone will only work in an interview setting if there's no left and right movement, which a lot of times there is. And so in this case, instead of flexi zone, I'm gonna switch over to my tracking mode. And now it's just gonna track his face. So I'm gonna select that face there and say, make sure to stay on that face. Go ahead and focus. And there you see that as long as they're not moving super quick, that tracking will pick it up pretty darn well. So this is the best setting I like to use when doing interviews. And when I'm feeling myself doing interviews for tutorials and stuff in front of my computer, I don't have somebody to be watching focus for me. So I just put it on tracking and hope that it will stay following my face the whole time. Come all the way super close to the camera, like a few feet away, Nate. Stop right there, good. And see how it followed his face. Now back all the way back up and you see how it tracks him all the way back. So that's probably the only scenario in which I would use that second setting, the tracking autofocus setting within the dual pixel options, um, is when I'm doing some kind of interview like this with just one face, or if I'm vlogging like this and I just have my face only and nobody else in the shot, those are great times to use the tracking setting. For everything else, I like to use Flexi Zone. So that's all I got for you. If you guys want to see the second half of this video, go visit fulltimefilmmaker.com to join my full training program where I teach people how to make a living making videos and how to land paying clients and sponsorships. And speaking of sponsorships, this video is actually sponsored by Squarespace. They are an all-in-one website building platform whom I have personally used and highly recommend to all, especially those who have no website designing abilities like myself. They are a great option because they have pre-built professional looking templates that you can use to make a beautiful website for your business in no time. And they actually offer free trials, so go to squarespace.com to get your free trial today. And if you end up liking it and you wanna buy it, use coupon code PARKER to get 10% off your first purchase. That's it, if you guys have any further questions for me about how to get focused, please let me know.